Hi. In this video, we're going to see how medium access control works in Wi-Fi networks. In particular, we're going to see the CSMA-CA mechanism. First of all, we're going to see a version of CSMA-CA with no data fragmentation. The scenario we're going to work with, it's, uh, it has uh, four actors, which are basically one access point and uh, three clients, uh, A, B, and C. And the way this access point and clients are um, set up in the environment is that A can uh, uh, transmit up to C and the access point, that the access point uh, can transmit to A and B, and that uh, C and B, respectively, can transmit to A and the access point, but uh, their transmissions don't go farther than that. So there is a limitation on the range of the, of the transmission of the different devices. So now we're going to use a schema of the, of the events with a timeline, which is uh, what you see right now in the slide, and the, that it's going to be describing us how uh, uh, the different frames uh, are transmitted and propagated uh, through time. So um, for, for the sake of this example, we are going to assume that the, at the beginning, both A and B want to transmit at the same time. They will initiate the transmission by sending uh, what is called a request to send a frame, an RTS. And uh, of course, if both of them transmit at the same time, these RTS frames are going to collide when uh, uh, they reach the access point. An additional effect is that uh, the RTS frame transmitted by A reaches client C. So client C knows that uh, machine A wants to transmit, so it is going to inhibit uh, itself from transmitting. So C is not going to transmit anything during the estimated duration of A's transmission. Okay, and this is what uh, you can see in the figure uh, represented by this uh, uh, purple line uh, with the NAV uh, acronym. NAV stands for Network Allocation Vector, and it's basically a timeout that C sets so that it uh, does not transmit anything until uh, A terminates the transmission. Uh, in theory, if uh, any of A or B would, would have been successful with the RTS, the access, point, the access point would have waited for a short time, which is called SIFS, and then it would have sent a clear to send uh, frame, which is another control frame like the RTS. And the goal of this CTS frame is to uh, confirm the possibility for transmission for one of the uh, clients. In this particular case, since there has been a collision, the access point doesn't re receive any request to send uh, correctly, so there is no clear to send. So the, the, neither A nor B receive uh, any kind of confirmation that they have the, the allowance to transmit, so after uh, waiting time, uh, they realize that their transmission hasn't been successful, basically their request uh, for transmission hasn't been successful, so they will wait a random time and attempt to retransmit. In this particular case, these random times are different for uh, both uh, clients, so the first of these uh, random times to, uh, to trigger is the one of A, so A is going to send an RTS uh, frame again. This time, this RTS is uh, going to reach the access point without colliding with any other frame because B hasn't sent anything. And also, the RTS frame is going to reach C as well, so C will uh, extend the NAV uh, period. We're going to clean the, the um, transmission 
we're going to clean the screen a bit so that we can see the, the successful transmission more clearly. So uh, now, uh, after the successful RTS, the access point is gonna, is gonna wait a short uh, uh, time period and send a clear to send to A. This clear to send uh, uh, frame is also received by B. So uh, uh, B also uh, inhibits itself from transmitting during a, a, a given amount of time, which is the estimation of the duration of uh, A's transmission. You may be wondering how both C and B know ha ha for how long they have to maintain the NAV inhibition. Well, these times are included in the RTS and CTS uh, control frames. Okay, after A receives the creal to send the CTS frame, it waits for a short time and after this short time, it can finally transmit the, the data, the full amount of data that A wanted to transmit. And uh, this data reaches A without a problem because uh, no one else is going to be transmitting. So after a short time, the access point is going to send an ACK. And the effect of this uh, ACK uh, is that um, B is gonna cease to be um, uh, inhibited after a different amount of time. Of time, in this case, it's not the same. Uh, it's a bit longer than the short uh, interval time that uh, we were waiting before. And after this time, B uh, can resume uh, its attempt to transmit. So it would it would send the RTS frame again and in this case since no one, no one else is attempting to transmit at the same time it would receive the clear to send and it could uh, finally transmit the data. So this is the example of uh, CSMACA without data fragmentation. You can see that all the data that A wanted to transmit has been transmitted in a single chunk. Uh, the next case that we are going to study is uh, CSMACA with data fragmentation. We're going to take the same example, but in this case, we're going to assume that uh, uh, the first uh, RTS uh, arrives without a collision. So uh, C will inhibit itself and the access point after a short time is going to send a clear to send, which uh, uh, provokes the inhibition of B. And uh, then after A receives the clear to send, it's going to wait a short time and then send a fragment of the data. Okay, only a fragment of the data. And since it's not the last fragment of the data, that means that there is more data to transmit by A, uh, this data frame carries an implicit RTS frame, an extension of the uh, time that uh, A requests to have the uh, channel uh, reserved. So this uh, additional RTS will uh, cause C to extend the uh, NAV uh, period. And also when the access point receives the data plus RTS, it's gonna uh, send after a short time an ACK, an acknowledgement, with a, an implicit clear to send, basically extending the lease of the channel for anyone that is listening. This uh, implicit uh, CTS in the ACK will uh, provoke that B extends the time uh, of the NAV inhibition. So after a short time after, after this ACK is, uh, ACK is received by A, uh, A will send another chunk of data, which in this case is also not the last uh, fragment of data. So it, it includes an uh, implicit RTS that causes C to, uh, uh, to prorogate the, the length of the inhibition. After a short time, the access point sends an ACK with uh, um, implicit CTS, which also causes B to continue the inhibition. And after this, and it's waiting a short time, uh, A is going to send another fragment, which is uh, again, not the last fragment, so it uh, carries an implicit RTS that causes C 
to uh, uh, inhibit uh, even more and also uh, causes the access point to send an ACK frame with an implicit CDS which causes B to uh, extend the inhibition uh, time. Then after a short time um, A sends finally the last fragment of data which in this case uh, doesn't carry any implicit RTS so the, after the access point receives this data it will send a final uh, ACK which doesn't carry an uh, implicit CDS so uh, both C and B will uh, realize that they are free to transmit whenever they want.